Three-phase motors have certain advantages over single-phase motors. First, their rotational direction can easily be changed by reversing any two of the three supply voltage wires. Second, they exhibit less running torque pulsation, since at least one phase is always producing an induced rotational effect on the rotor. Third, and probably most significant, three-phase motors have a higher starting torque than single-phase motors. Finally, three-phase motors are more efficient than single-phase motors. As a class, three-phase motors are a lot easier to understand than the single-phase variety. A rotating magnetic field is achieved by placing the stator fields 120 mechanical degrees apart around the motor shell. With a three-phase power supply, voltage inputs are separated by 120 electrical degrees. Application of these separated inputs to the stator coils results in a rotating field. Because of this phase difference, three-phase motors create their own starting torque. Therefore, start windings, start capacitors, and start relays are unnecessary. Three-phase motors are wired in either a delta or Y arrangement. The connections for these motors are similar to those for the distribution transformers that you studied earlier. In the delta connection, the voltage between any two lines to the motor is the same as the voltage across each phase. However, current flow in each line is 1.732 times greater than the current in each phase because of the series parallel arrangement of the circuit. In a Y-connected three-phase motor, phase voltages are less than the line voltage, and phase currents are the same as the line currents. Each voltage phase provides current for two windings connected in series. This results in different phase and line voltage and current relationships than those for the delta connection. Differences in line and phase limits dictate that there will also be differences in power provided to and consumed by the delta and Y connected motors. Power for either connection method is calculated by use of the following equation. P equals 1.732 times E times I times power factor. You can see that there are significant differences in power consumption for the two types. The ratio used, 1.732, is the square root of 3. At this point, you have been acquainted with the various types of electric motors you are likely to encounter as an air conditioning technician. You understand how they work and how they are selected to perform various jobs. An important thing to remember is that motors are among the most expensive components in the systems on which you will be working. Therefore, great care is taken to protect them from damage. The most common cause of motor failure is excessive heat. Heat can be caused by a variety of problems, such as a defective start relay, excessive load, or loss of refrigerant gas cooling in a hermetic compressor motor. Motor protection devices are designed to disconnect power from the motor before heat failure occurs. Let's look at some additional causes of overheating. Every electric motor has an electrical characteristic called locked rotor current, or instant of start current. Before the rotor starts to turn, there is an instant when the current is three to five times its normal level. If that surge is sustained because of conditions that keep the rotor from turning, the motor could be severely damaged. For that reason, overload protection devices are needed to disconnect power if high current causes an overheat condition. Another cause of excessive heat in motor windings is operation at too high or too low a voltage. Motor overload devices must be capable of protecting against high temperatures caused by voltage variations. Here are the motor terminal voltage variation tolerances for the most common distribution system voltages. Operation outside of these limits can drastically reduce the life expectancy of electric motors. In a three-phase motor, a leg-to-leg -leg voltage imbalance exceeding 2% will shorten the life of the motor. Another overheating problem common only to three-phase motors is that if one of the three phases is lost while the motor is operating, the motor will continue to run. This is sometimes called single phasing. 
The resulting imbalance will increase temperature in the remaining two windings to a point where overload protection is necessary. Three categories of devices are used to protect a motor from damage caused by excessive heat. Those that sense temperature, those that sense current, and those that sense both temperature and current. We will cover several types of protective devices here. Some of them may no longer be in common use, but you may encounter them on older systems. Before we start, let's clarify some terminology. A pilot duty device senses current overload or excessive temperature within the motor and opens the contactor circuit to remove power to the motor. A line duty device senses current flow and temperature in the motor winding and will disconnect power if a current overload occurs. In short, pilot duty devices open the motor control circuit. Line duty devices open the motor winding circuit and remove the line voltage. Once an overload device has opened or tripped, it must be reset before the motor can operate again. Two types of reset devices are common. A manual reset overload device must be physically switched once it is tripped. <clears throat> An automatic reset overload device will automatically reconnect power to the motor after the overcurrent or over temperature condition has passed. The advantage of automatic reset is that personal attention is not required following a nuisance trip. Reset time for automatic reset devices is based on recovery from the out of tolerance condition and can vary from seconds to hours. The two temperature sensitive overloads shown here operate on the principle that heating a bimetal strip will cause the strip to warp. It's similar to a bimetal thermostat. The external shell device is mounted on the motor shell. When the motor shell overheats, the disc warps upward to disconnect power. Reset is automatic when the motor shell cools. The internal device is wound into the motor windings and will open the winding circuit when over temperature conditions occur. Reset is automatic upon cooling. The thermal overload relay is a current sensitive automatic reset device connected in series with the motor winding. As winding current and resulting heat increase, the upper bimetal strip will warp to the point where it opens the switch in series with the contactor. Reset is automatic upon cooling. The lower bimetal strip, known as the compensating bimetal, prevents nuisance trips caused by changes in ambient temperature. Two versions of the heater element current overload are commonly used for pilot duty protection of motors. The bimetal device uses a twisted bimetal that responds to heat generated by the heater wire. When the bimetal twists sufficiently, the contacts open, disconnecting the contactor. When the bimetal cools, the contacts automatically close, thus resetting the circuit. With a ratchet and spindle device, a small operating lever closes a set of contacts when the lever is pushed into a ratchet wheel. As the motor winding current increases to the trip point, heat from the heater wire melts the solder surface that holds the ratchet in position. The ratchet releases the operating lever to open the contacts, thus disconnecting the contactor. The reset button must be manually pushed to close the contacts. External supplemental overloads provide either current protection or current temperature protection. These devices use a bimetal warped disc. The current temperature device is normally connected for line duty, but some versions are used in pilot duty applications. In that case, contacts of the current sensitive device are connected in series with the contactor circuit. Both devices reset automatically after recovery from the overload condition. The Heinemann magnetic overload is a current sensitive device. In principle, a core placed inside a coil will attempt to center itself in the magnetic field created when the current flows through the coil. Excessive current will pull the core toward the armature. The core magnetically attracts the armature, causing the contacts which are connected to the armature to open. The silicone provides a damping effect, 
to prevent operation of the device for temporary overcurrent conditions, such as locked rotor current at start. Another inline duty overload device is based on both winding current and temperature and is wound into the motor winding. As an overload condition occurs, the bimetal warps, opening the contacts. Reset is automatic. The hermetic motor thermostat has rate of rise compensation. The case and the internal strip expand at different rates. It will trip early if the temperature rises rapidly, such as in a locked rotor condition. If the temperature rises gradual, it will trip at its normal setting. This arrangement prevents a rapidly rising temperature from overshooting the trip-out point and damaging the motor. Three-phase Y-connected motors in the smaller horsepower range can also be protected by line-duty current temperature devices such as these. They can be internal or external devices, except, of course, for hermetic compressor applications where they must be inside the compressor shell. When an overload occurs, the bimetal disc warps, breaking the electrical circuit. The device automatically resets when the disc cools. That concludes our coverage of AC motors and motor protection. Here are some key points to remember about the material covered in the second segment of this module. Four common types of single phase motors are the permanent split capacitor, PSC, capacitor start, CS, capacitor start, capacitor run, CSR, and shaded pole, 